My name is Afshin Javed. I was born in Iran. And uh, I was born to a Muslim family. My grandfather was a Muslim leader who had dedicated his life to serving Allah. He built mosques and orphanages. I grew up with uh, a father that was zealous for his belief. A grandfather that always taught me how to follow and please God. I also grew up with a mother that always would tell me stories of how God had saved my life many, many times. I had been sick and the doctors had given up hope. They prayed and dedicated me. They said, if God, if you heal our child, we will dedicate him to the eighth Imam of the Shia Muslim. So uh, they took me there, they shaved my hair and they take equal of the weight gold to this Imam. So I was dedicated to the eight Imam. I began to study and uh, memorize the Quran from age of five. But I had this deep love for Allah, for Islam. My, uh, my grandfather would tell me the meaning of a Muslim. You know, a Muslim is not someone that believes in the Quran or believes in Prophet Muhammad. Muslim is someone that believes in Allah, Muhammad, in the Quran, and they submit 100% of their life to the cause of Allah. Otherwise, you are not a Muslim. Muslim means submitted to God. And I was trained by my grandfather to be such a man. In the God of Islam, the Quran teaches us that Allah Alam, only Allah knows everything. And so you don't know if you are forgiven or he is happy with you till the day of judgment, the Diyama, the day of resurrection, <laughs> where everyone will be judged. So you pour your heart out hoping that Allah will hear your prayers and accept it. And with that heart, I served, prayed every day, but never knew if it is enough. So I strive to do more. At age 12, I thought, this is not enough. I owe so much more. So I joined the Hezbollah. So at age 14, I volunteered to go to the war between Iran and Iraq. And I was one of the volunteers that wanted to walk on landmines. So I thought, if I give my life for Allah, then for sure, maybe then will I know He is pleased with me. And so they saw the zeal in me and they said, okay, you cannot die for Allah, but will you be willing to kill for Allah? I said, of course. I remember the first time uh, I saw someone die. When they were giving life, I noticed as if something also died within me. So every time I went to the next execution, I wanted to keep busy. So I would uh, experiment to see how long it would take this person to die. And I thought, while I stand there, watch this man die, I take pleasure in knowing that maybe Allah will see my sincere heart that I am willing to do everything for him and he will be pleased with me. But I did not feel that. My grandfather one day told me, Ashley, why don't you go to United States of America and why don't you tell these poor misled Christians about Muhammad our Prophet? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Which is what's something I used to say. Now it's a tongue twister, you know. But I thought, this is good. He said, if you convert these Christians into Islam, then Allah will be pleased with you. I got out of Iran, went to Pakistan. I was in Pakistan for two years, more than two years. I acquired some... Uh, false passports and I traveled to Malaysia with my brother. In Malaysia, while we were getting ready to go to the next country, which was Canada, United States, I was arrested and put in prison. 
At that point, I had uh, 30 illegal passports. You know, anyways, I also meditating in the Quran, I had gained the spiritual powers. I would pray for people and they would get hurt. If anyone did something that I found uh, upsetting, I would pray for them. I remember one time there was a, a soldier and he was making fun of me. He was probably about 15, 10 to 15 meters away from me. He was making fun of me. I didn't say anything. Then he made fun of Ayatollah Khomeini. At the moment he said this, I got angry with him and I prayed a prayer and I just looked at him and I, my hands were bound. I just, 15 meters away from me, he began to choke. And I helped him there by these powers that I had. Till he was literally dying. Then I let go. <gasps> and the guy turns around and runs. So I had gained these powers and I wanted more. I prayed and prayed and prayed and fasted and prayed more than any Muslims you have ever met. One night as I was praying, I felt the presence of an evil spirit that came into the room. And the moment this evil spirit came into the room, I knew he intends to harm me. And I, being a good Muslim, had no fear of evil because as a Muslim we say Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greater one. You normally translate in English Allahu Akbar, Allah is great, but no, actually the real heart of Allah is Allah is greater than anyone, anything else. So I said, I believe in Allah. The moment I bring the name of Allah, this thing will run away. So I said, Bismillah rahman rahim And I expected it to run away, but it didn't. It came closer. <laughs> so I said, oh, I have made a mistake. You know, Muslims have a shahada, a statement of faith that you give. I believe in Prophet Muhammad, I believe in Allah, and Prophet Muhammad, and so on and so forth. I said, I must introduce myself as a Muslim. Then it will run away. I said, you know, I gave the shahada, and then you, are, you say, Satan be away. And I said that, and it didn't go away, it came closer. I started to recite the Quran fully expecting the holy scriptures of Islam will make this spirit run away. But it came closer. At that point, I began to choke. And I couldn't breathe. At the very last of my own strength, I shouted in my own native tongue, Farsi, not Arabic, Farsi. I said, God help me. And when I said that, as soon as my word came out, I heard a clear, audible voice, like you hear mine today. And the voice said to me, bring the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh. Amen. And uh, the moment I opened my mouth, I wanted, I literally was a desperate man drowning and someone is offering a rope. I opened my mouth, but as a Muslim, we are habit. We are, we are, you know, human beings. We are people of habit. We have a habit. We say, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad, Ya Ali. So in, uh, oh, uh, call upon you Allah, call upon, so on and so forth. So it is normal with that kind of training to open your mouth and say, Ya Isa. But I didn't. A sentence came out of my mouth which I was not in control of. And the sentence was this, Jesus, if you are the truth, show me yourself. I don't know why I said that, but before the sentence was finished, this evil spirit had run away. And I was a bit confused. Allah, what, what? Jesus is one of our dearest prophets, but a man. Allah is definitely greater than Jesus, then how come the name of Jesus is able to accomplish something that the name of Allah could not do? And my teacher said, don't ask too many questions, all of you Muslims, because 
If you ask too many questions, you either become crazy or you become an infidel. I said, I will never, I, I will never ask this question. Forget tonight happened. I will go to bed and I will just forget. I slept, got up in the morning like every other day. A good Muslim wakes up before the sun rises to give the first prayer. And when you start, you start in the name of Allah. And as I began to say Bismillah Rahman in the name of Allah who is most merciful, most gracious, I heard a voice that said, then why would Jesus help you? And this question did not let me go for two weeks. After two weeks, the solid foundation of my faith was gone. So in desperation, I said, God, I will pray and I will fast and I will not move from one place till you show me the way, you show me the truth. No matter what you show me, I will follow you. At that very moment, the whole room changed the atmosphere and a man stood in front of it, in front of me in the middle of the room whose whole being was shining like that. You see, as a Muslim, you do sins, you do good things, all you have to do is make sure that the good part is more than the bad part. Escape, right? <coughs> well, I tell you the truth, I had tried to do many good things in my life. I had done many, many things by any standard in any religion. They would have said these are good things. I'd help people and everything else. But that moment I realized, no matter how much good you do, no matter how much good you do, the very first moment you do one mistake, one sin, that sin is enough. You, the judge is just. He must judge you for that. Like every other just judge in the world. You cannot say I have fed so many orphans and I killed only two people so you should let me go. <laughs> they would think you are crazy. The just judge does not judge according to how many good things you have done but according to what you did not follow, where you broke the law. And I realized that that very moment, the moment he appeared and I knew that the only thing that can save me is forgiveness, not good works. So I ran to the corner of the room and I held my head literally in my arms and I shouted in the most fear I have ever had. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, and I couldn't stop. And I was begging for forgiveness, but I didn't think he would give it. At that moment, in the middle of the desperation, as I'm shouting, forgive me, forgive me, I felt a touch on my left shoulder. And a gentle voice that said, I forgive you. In the moment. <clears throat> so I thought, wait a minute. Only God can forgive, this is God who forgave me, but I feel forgiven right now. Who are you? I have studied about God for so many years, but this is a different God, because Allah is merciful and forgiving, but you don't only know if you are forgiven in the day of judgment. Who are you that forgives me and I feel forgiven? And he responded, I am the way, the truth, and the life. All my life as a Muslim, we pray for Salat al Muslim, the street path. And I had prayed, show me the way. And I thought it's a direction. Show me the truth. Maybe something that would measure up in the law. And But truth and the way. Thank you. He is saying something so different than any religion in the world, any philosophy. The way is a person. The way is a person. It's not a direction. The truth is not something you do take to court and you measure is it truth or not. Truth is a person. Life 
is a person, and that person is standing in front of me. This is very powerful, but I have never heard these words, so I don't know what it means. I said, I don't understand this. Oh yeah, oh I remember my teacher. Allah has 100 names, 99 we know, one we don't know. Anyone that finds the 100 name of Allah, surely he has found favor in his eyes. I said, maybe this is the 100 name of Allah. <laughs> so I said, I don't understand. What is your name? And he said, Jesus Christ. And the moment he said that, it is as if some invisible force grabbed hold of every bone within my body and took it out of my, my flesh. I just fell to the ground. And I began to weep. I began to weep because I don't know how this is possible to this day, but I understand theologically how it's possible, but physically it was something crazy because I felt like I've come back home. That I always belong to him. Wait a minute, no, not only I belong to him, he belongs to me. We belong to each other. At the same time that I was like, oh, I've come from a trip, you come home, you come to your own bed, you come to your own family. I felt I'm there, but how is this possible? I must also say this. I said, what's the most beautiful thing about you? I will tell you his eyes. His eyes is the most amazing thing. They asked me, what color is I said, I will explain the color. <laughs> his eyes, the color of his eyes, is like when you look, his eyes have arms that grabs you and pulls you in. And the moment you find yourself, you're in the middle of an ocean that is not made out of water. This ocean is a never-ending ocean that has no bottom. And it has waves that does not go towards shores, but actually you are in the center of it and the waves from every corner of it comes towards you and slaps you and washes over you. And every wave is a wave of mercy and love and compassion and the goodness and the kindness of this marvelous God that in His goodness and love created this universe. But within it, He made a clay and desired to love it and gave His breath for it. That is the color of the eyes of my Lord and Savior. Two hours I cried after two hours. He says, I should look up. And I looked up and I saw like this TV screen. And I saw people of all nations and all generations, and everyone has seen it. But I, coming from an Islamic background, I'm so focused on who has seen it. And I see, I said, oh, I live among all these sinners. And he says, Afshin, how easy did I forgive you? Oh, very easy. We Persians have a saying, as easy as drinking water. It's very easy drinking water, right? So as easy as, no, 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 wait, wait. Even easier than drinking water. He said, Ashin, I can forgive all of them. As easy as I forgive you. Who's going to tell them? Of course. Anyone that has had an experience with Jesus, you know this, he does very well. He sets you up for a contract and he sells you immediately. You know? <laughs> so I said, send me! <laughs> Just now I was sitting with the Sudan said, the Orthodox are here, the Catholics are here. The Anglicans are there, so many, from so many denominations, and not just regular people, leaders. 
shepherds of so many with so much influence. Beyond that, there are people that have a heart for the, to know and experience this true life in God. God bless you all.